the murderous prince. In the late spring of 1810, the unprecedented and shocking event unfolded within the walls of St James's Palace that sent waves of scandal throughout the kingdom. It was a night of May 31st when a sudden and vicious assault occurred in the private chambers of Ernest, the Duke of Cumberland, while he lay fast asleep in his bed. Little did anyone know that this incident would unravel a tale of mystery and intrigue. As the clock struck two in the morning, the Duke was jolted awake by a series of blows to his head. At first he mistook the source for a flitting bat that had somehow entered his sleeping quarters. But the sinister truth soon revealed itself. The Duke was under attack from an unknown assailant. According to the Times at the time, on the Wednesday the Duke of Cumberland attended a dinner at Greenwich before returning to the city in an elegant carriage, drawn by four horses. Later, he graced a concert for the Royal Society of Musicians with his presence. Around half past twelve, His Royal Highness retired to his apartments in St James's Palace, where he eventually retired to bed at approximately one o'clock. It was around two in the morning when the dreadful assault transpired, rousing the Duke from his peaceful slumber. The Duke's own account given under oath provided chilling details of the terrifying encounter. Before the clock struck three, I lay in my bed asleep when I was struck with two heavy blows to the head, which rudely awakened me. Dazed and disorientated, I received two more blows, accompanied by a hissing sound. I thought in my half-awake state that perhaps a bat had inadvertently flown into my room, but the relentless attack continued and I was dealt with two additional blows. In the dim light of a lamp I saw no intruder, only a blood-stained letter on the nearby night table. The Duke continued recounting his efforts to escape the vicious onslaught. I hastily rose from my bed and headed to the door, situated at the head of my bedchamber. But the assailant was unrelenting, and I suffered a deep wound to my right thigh from what seemed to be a sabre. In my desperation, I called out for Neil, my page. Together we returned to my bedroom, only to discover that the door leading to the yellow room was wide open, a room that is always locked before I retire to bed. There on the floor lay a naked sword that likely caused the injury to my thigh. A battle for the truth. The attack on the Duke of Cumberland spread like wildfire, captivating the public's imagination and fueling rampant speculation. The prevailing sentiment was that the Duke himself might be involved in the mysterious demise of his valet, Joseph Sellis, who was later discovered lifeless in his own room, with a fatal cut to his throat. Suspicions of murder hung heavily over the Duke, and the notion that he had orchestrated both attacks was not far from the public's collective consciousness. As whispers of conspiracy and betrayal echoed through the corridors of power, questions remained unanswered. Was Joseph Sellis truly responsible for the Duke's assault, as some suspected, or did Sellis meet a tragic end as part of a larger, more sinister plot? The truth behind the scandalous affair seemed to elude all, leaving the nation gripped in a tense and enthralling drama of royal proportions. A royal drama unfolds. As the Duke of Cumberland fought off his assailant and emerged from the harrowing encounter, he cried out to his waiting valet, Neil, in a desperate plea for help. The Duke's exclamation of, Neil, Neil, I am murdered, I am murdered, echoed through the corridors of the palace, instantly rousing Neil from his slumber in the adjacent room. The Duke recounted the terrifying details of the attack to Neil, revealing that the murderers were still lurking within the bedroom. Without hesitation, Neil armed himself with a poker alongside the shaken Duke. They cautiously made their way through the dim passageway. To their surprise, Neil accidentally stepped on the very sword used in the vicious assault, a weapon sharpened only days before and belonging to the Duke himself. Curious circumstances surrounded the incident as it was revealed that the valet Joseph Sellis had taken the Duke's uniform and sword into his own room for a supposed regiment inspection that never occurred. Sellers later returned the uniform to the wardrobe but left the sword in the Duke's bedroom. This discovery only added to the enigma surrounding the night's events. 
Although the Duke's assailant had managed to escape, they found the door to the yellow room, previously secured before the Duke retired, standing ajar. Fearing the attacker might still be within the palace, the Duke gave immediate orders to secure the premises, preventing any potential escape. A dark and tragic end. As the servants hurried to inform Joseph Sellis of the tumultuous events, they found his room locked. Hastening through the state apartments by an alternative route, they were startled to discover that the doors which should have been secured were strangely unlocked. When they finally entered Celis's room, a horrifying sight awaited them. Celis lay lifeless on his bed, his throat gruesomely slit with a razor. Louette Buller, accompanied by a sergeant and several men who were on duty in the palace, arrived on scene swiftly after the alarm was raised. The gruesome sight they encountered left no doubt about the ferocity of the attack, with blood saturating the bedclothes and furniture. Unravelling the mystery. Amidst the shock and grief, the perplexing question remained, why would Celis, a trusted valet, unleash such violence upon the Duke? The Times reported that no clear reason had been given to explain the gravity of this crime and the betrayal that it entailed. The Duke himself testified that Celis had not incurred his displeasure and there seemed to be no apparent motive for such a heinous act. Nonetheless, speculations abound, with some suggesting that Celis's actions may have been triggered by advances made by the Duke towards his wife. Hints of a potentially closer relationship between the Duke and Celis's wife, further fuelled by their roles as good parents to one of Celis's children, only added to the intrigue surrounding this royal drama. The scandalous death of the Duke of Cumberland's valet continues to captivate the nation, with questions lingering and the truth veiled in darkness. As the kingdom mourns the loss of Celis and grapples with the implications of Duke's attack, the puzzle of what truly transpired that fateful night remains unsolved, shrouded in a web of secrets and whispers. A web of motives unravelled. Within the labyrinth tale of the Duke of Cumberland's valet's tragic end, motives intertwine, creating a tapestry of possibilities that captivates the imagination. One theory points to the Duke's virulent anti-Catholic sentiments and his penchant for malicious teasing. It suggested that Celis being Sardinian and supposedly Roman Catholic may have been the target of the Duke's barbs, reaching a breaking point. However, this theory loses strength when considering that Celis had his children baptised in the Church of England, indicating a degree of assimilation and lessening in the likelihood of faith-based tensions. Another intriguing notion revolves around insanity, as it is postulated that Celis might have been seized by a fit of madness, leading to his violent actions. Such a motive, though mysterious and compelling, leaves room for further exploration. The most compelling suggestion, however, lies in jealousy and theft. It's proposed that Celis harboured envy towards the other valet, Neil, who seemed to receive preferential treatment. His plan may have been to attack the Duke, rob him and cunningly frame Neil for the deed. Suspicion would naturally fall upon the valet on duty that night, enhancing the success of Celis's scheme. The troubled past. Delving into Celis's history, a darker past emerges. Accused of thievery during this time as a valet in America, he managed to escape conviction due to insufficient evidence. Nevertheless, Celis left his tainted reputation behind and made his way to England, where he found employment in the service of the Duke. A botch scheme. Celis's plan took a tragic turn when he wailed the Duke's own sword as his weapon. Miscalculating his attack, he struck the Duke with the flat of the blade instead of its edge, waking him rather than delivering a fatal blow. As help was summoned, Celis fled to his room, but could not erase the damning evidence before the servants arrived at his door. Faced with the consequences of his actions, he chose to end his own life rather than face justice. Unravelling the verdict. Amidst the speculations, the question of whether the Duke himself was a culprit in Celis's demise looms large. However, it seems unlikely that the Duke, with his own injuries from the attack, 
could have been responsible. Additionally, the numerous witnesses whose testimonies corroborate each other's accounts lend credibility to their version of events. Moreover, the locked door to Celis' room dispels the notion that the Duke could have orchestrated the scene to appear as suicide after murdering the valet. The pieces of the puzzle align in such a way that the truth seems to point away from the Duke's direct involvement in the tragedy. As the enigma surrounding the Duke of Cumberland's valet's scandalous death persists, each thread of motive and action weaves a spellbinding narrative, keeping the kingdom and its people entranced by the secrets and intrigues of royalty. A conspiracy unveiled. Amidst the layers of uncertainty surrounding the Duke of Cumberland's valet's shocking demise, an intriguing and clandestine interpretation emerges one that points to a carefully orchestrated scheme to eliminate Celis. Could it be that someone harboured a deep desire to rid themselves of Celis and the plot fell into the lap of his rival valet, Neil? The notion gains traction as doubts arise around the botched nature of the attempted murder. It seems implausible that a trained valet would fail so miserable in ending someone's life with a sword. And why opt for a sword in the first place when Celis' own tragic suicide by razor demonstrated its lethal potential? An alternative scenario. Could it be that Celis and the Duke found themselves embroiled in a heated confrontation, driven by anger, self-defence or a passionate dispute over personal matters such as his wife, financial matters or his ongoing feud with Neil? Perhaps in the heat of the moment, Celis wielded the sword against the Duke and unintentionally inflicting harm. And overwhelmed by remorse and guilt, he took his own life, unable to bear the weight of what had transpired. The Shadows of a Trial The saga of Celis' death resurfaced in 1832 when the Duke took legal action against Josiah Phillips, the author of a contentious book titled The Authentic Records of the Court of England for the last 70 years. Within its pages lay the explosive accusation that the Duke had murdered Celis to prevent the valet from exposing alleged homosexual relations with Neil, the other valet. At the trial, evidence dismantled the credibility of the book's claims, revealing them to be baseless. The court found Phillips guilty of libel, thus putting a definitive end to the salacious allegations that had cast shadows on the Duke's reputation. In the grand theatre of royal intrigue, the mystery of Duke of Cumberland's valet's death unfolds like a captivating drama. Each twist and turn, every hidden motive, and rivalries and masks draw the audience into a web of deception and suspense. As the truth eludes capture, whispers of conspiracy and clandestine motives continue to tantalise the minds of those who seek to unravel the enigma that remains entwined in history.